awesome fall morning where it's still 85 degrees outside, right? But uh, very exciting to have every single one of you learn more about the CU system as a whole, focusing on the similarities and the differences uh, between each school. Um, well, I'll go ahead and start off introducing uh, myself and then I'll pass it on to my colleagues. So my name is Maria Camila Taylor. I go by Camila or Camilla and I am the admissions representative for CU Boulder. So I am in a primarily working with the Denver metro area. I work with Denver Public Schools, Aurora Public Schools, Adams County. Um, primarily, if you live in Denver metro, then you can always reach out to me. Uh, a little bit about myself, I am a alumna of CU Boulder, so I did attend in 2017 where I double majored in ecology and evolutionary biology and communication, minored in leadership, and also pursued the public health certificate. And then lastly, I am a first generation student, so first one in my family to go to college due to no fault of my parents. Uh, very exciting. I'll go ahead and pass it on to uh, Denicia because I know you present after me um, and representing CU Denver. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Denicia Heron and I'm an admissions counselor at the University of Colorado Denver. I'm also an alumna. Um, I did three years of my undergraduate studies at CU Boulder and finished up my last year at CU Denver. Completed my bachelor's in sociology and a master's in public administration from CU Denver as well. I'm also a first generation student and the schools that I work with are Aurora Public Schools, Denver Public Schools, and I'm also a first generation student. And I'm going to pass it on to Chia. Hello everyone, my name is Chia Lacroix and I'm an assistant director at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs or UCCS. I graduated from UCCS in 2010 with my bachelor's in psychology and then I did my master's in counseling and human services there. And I've been with the Office of Admissions since 2009. So I've actually been here for quite a while, or 2011, one of those years, for a while. Um, so <laughs> Definitely, I love helping students. I'm also a first generation student. And then at UCCS, I lived on campus for four years and was a resident assistant for two of them. Did a sorority and got really involved on campus. I love that student life aspect too. Wonderful. So you can certainly see not only do we have the perspective of being in admissions and certainly being the advocate for every single one of you, but we also have the, the perspective since we've attended each of our very own institutions. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. And I really want to start off this presentation with explaining how does the University of Colorado system work? Um, we get a lot of misconceptions, uh, like if you apply to one, you get into all of them, or that we are all working together at the same time, and you can just hop between one school to the other. It doesn't necessarily work like that, actually, by any way. <laughs> um, it is really easier to explain it as the University of Colorado is the umbrella term, and we all have different campuses. Um, so we have the Boulder campus, the Denver campus, the Colorado Springs campus, and then we have the Anschutz Medical Campus. Uh, it's easier to explain the similarities than there are differences because we um, don't really have that many similarities as you'll find through the presentation. In fact, the only thing we truly share are the name University of Colorado, as well as our school colors, black and gold. Um, it, we also have different application processes, which we'll come to find out, different financial aid we can be able to provide for our students. So truly, if you do have a question about Denver, for example, don't go to Boulder asking about those questions. It's really just what we want to be able to portray with this presentation. Um, so we have Boulder, Denver, and Colorado Springs, of course, represented here, but you'll notice we don't have anybody from Anschutz. That's just because it's our medical campus, and that is a campus great for students after they've attended one of our very own schools or any other school to be uh, really to be general. Um, Anschutz will be able to provide the, the medical opportunities that come on a graduate level. Um, and of course, any questions you do have about CU Anschutz, we do want to direct you in that Anschutz direction um, because they'll be able to answer those questions and dive into detail. We truly just don't know um, other than how they might connect to our very own schools. Now, starting off with CU Boulder, we were the first University of Colorado school system um, just, just the first location. 
we have a very different, it will, you'll notice all of these schools have very different cultural uh, perspectives. So for example, we are the number one college town uh, in America, um, located in Boulder, Colorado, about a half an hour away from Denver. And we're going to be a, a pretty big school um, in, in comparison. We are a school of about 32,000 students that does include undergraduate and graduate level. Um, and we'll get into the, the majors and the academics in just a little bit. But we are again located in in Boulder, Colorado. And so I'll go ahead and pass it on to Denicia to talk about CU Denver. And CU Denver, we're located right in the heart of downtown Denver. We're Colorado's only public urban research university. And our connection to the city inspires leading research, creative work, and civic engagement. And being housed in downtown Denver, we serve a little over 15,000 students total. Our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one and our average class size is 27 students. Um, we have about 42% students of color and 49% first generation students. Um, and then we actually, um, as you can see on the screen in 2013, um, is when our mascot came into existence, Milo the Lynx, and how we came up with the name Milo, the Mayas that were located in the Mile High City of Denver, Low, were located in Lower Downtown Denver, also known as Lodo, and that's how we got the name Milo. Um, so I'm going to pass it on over to Chia. And with UCCS, so we are in Colorado Springs. It is the second largest city in Colorado. And so we do have students who come from all over. And with Colorado Springs, you have the mountains right next door to you, as well as the city life and the campus itself. We're around 12,500 students total. So we're considered a medium-sized university with an average class size of about 25. So then that way you do have the different students that you can interact with in your classes as well. And we have our mascot is Clyde. He's the mountain lion. So that is a little bit about us. Wonderful. Now, I also want to preface, if you do have any particular questions, we're, we're starting to get into the meat of, of what we all can offer. Um, and so feel free to put it in, in that Q&A box as we will have a panel portion uh, at the end of this very presentation. So any question that comes up, you can put it in now, you can wait to put it in later. We'll be able to answer that at the very end. So speaking of what we can offer academically, um, with CU Boulder, we have a variety of different opportunities with over 120 different majors, a variety of minor certificates and concurrent degree programs. So the ability for you to pursue a bachelor's and a, um, and a master's at the same time before graduation. So this is just a little bit as far as our organizational setups when it comes to what you can experience. Of course, you can be in more than one different college at one time. Um, for me, for example, I was in arts and sciences, media communication and information, school of education all at one time and in four years. So when we truly say pursue anything you're interested in, interested in doing, then really truly pursue that. But then also ask yourself, what else are you interested in doing? Is that maybe something in a totally different college? Is that maybe adding another minor? Um, we truly are flexible when it comes to that academic customization. Now, this is certainly a very overwhelming list. Um, we are, are, have a lot of opportunities. It's very exciting, but again, nerve wracking to be able to choose from, especially as a 17 year old or 18 year old. Um, so because of that, we also offer the program in exploratory studies, which is a first year program where you have the first year to literally just explore. When you think about it, you don't really have that buffer between high school and college. Um, and we wanna give that buffer for you to just literally consider every single opportunity that we have to offer at CU Boulder and whether you want to pursue a major, minor, concurrent degree or certificate within. Now with exploratory studies, you can't graduate from the program. You can only start off in the program and have that first year. And it's not meant to delay graduation, nor is it meant for you to take classes that won't count for anything. I know that's a big worry. It truly is meant for you to just consider, have you ever thought about being an engineer? Have you ever thought about going to medical school? Um, do you wanna avoid going to medical school? You wanna avoid being an engineer? Okay, what else is there for you? 
Um, so truly consider that. Again, you can opt into it with your application for CU Boulder. And then I'll give CU Denver. Thank you. And for the University of Colorado Denver, this is a listing of all of our academic colleges. Um, we're one of the only schools in the state of Colorado that offer a bachelor's degree in architecture. For the College of Arts and Media, we have our own recording studio, record label, um, and film school. And then the business school, we have an entrepreneurship program that's like the Shark Tank. If you propose your business plan and are selected, they give you startup money for your business. And then through the School of Education and Human Development, you can do teacher education with the licensure program. Um, and they also have a job placement program and they pay students a stipend in one of the programs that we offer called NextGen. And through the College of Engineering, Design and Computing, we have a brand new construction management degree in that area. Through the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, that's one of our widest, largest degree programs. Any of the social sciences, um, mathematics, just the list goes on. And then also the School of Public Affairs is our smallest degree program where they only offer public service and criminal justice. And the Anschutz Medical Campus, we actually have a partnership um, with the Anschutz Medical Campus. If students are looking at going into the medical field, we have the BABSMD program and we also have the BABSDDS program. So if you're looking at going into medical or uh, dental, we do have that program which provides more hands-on training. They prepare you for the entrance exam and then you also get a guaranteed interview with the dental school or medical school. So those are just some of the different programs that you can do at the University of Colorado Denver. And we also have the opportunity for students to kind of um, explore and then we have the first year experience courses that freshman students are required to take their first year of college, just kind of to kind of get you in that mind frame and to kind of get you transitioned from high school into college as well. And I'll pass it on to Gia. All right, so at UCCS, we do have several different academic colleges. So we have our Helen and Arthur E. Johnson, Bethel College of Nursing and Health Sciences. So we do have a full nursing program where you would actually spend two years in the hospital and then your, sorry, you'd have one year prerequisites and then three years in the hospitals for your actual nursing clinicals where you get that experience. We also just opened up a new building called the Hibble Center, which really is going to help a lot of our students pursuing that exercise science side. And so with exercise science, they have our athletic trainers down there. We actually have different physicians where you would be able to watch many surgeries and see those take place and be able to have some of your classes actually being taught by those physicians as well or different people within the exercise science arena. Then we have our College of Business. So within the College of Business, we have a variety of majors such as accounting and international business, finance, business administration, but we also have some unique majors like our sport management major. And so Colorado Springs is called the Olympic City because we do have the Olympic Training Center. We have one of them down in Colorado Springs. So students can do their internships with different Olympic committees and also with some international teams as well. And then we have a PGA golf management program. So for any students who want to make golf their passion and pursue that, you can do that as well. Within College of Education, we have different majors if you're thinking of working with little kids for early childhood education or elementary, secondary education, and then also human services if you wanted to be more part of that counseling side. College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. We have things like mechanical, electrical, computer engineering, computer science. We also have a lot with cybersecurity because the National Cybersecurity Center is in Colorado Springs for your internships. And then game design and development is very popular. If you want to learn how to create video games, you're able to do that as well. And College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences is where you're going to find your biology, chemistry, undecided majors for students who haven't selected a major yet. That is completely fine. You have until your junior year to declare a major. And last but not least, School of Public Affairs has criminal justice where we have forensic studies. If you wanted to study crime scene lab and investigations or investigation, injury and death, 
things like that. And our social work program is found within our School of Public Affairs as well. So those are our different colleges. Wonderful. Well, we definitely still want to be able to hit on the similarities between all three schools. Um, and really, that's truly, we're all going to offer uh, major, minor certificate, cert certificate options with the same accreditation. Um, so it really just means on every single diploma that you will receive, whether you go to CU Boulder or UCCS or CU Denver, it still will say the University of Colorado. Um, you are a part of the University of Colorado school system. But the, you, as you've seen, we all are going to call it something different. We all are going to offer different things. So please just make sure you're uh, talking to the right university or talking to all three of us to see if we have the, those specific opportunities within our campus. Now switching to just the community aspect. Starting with CU Boulder, we are a D1 university, so we do play in the Pac-12. Uh, we have a variety of different sports like football, tennis, cross-country cross, uh, cross -country skiing, um, basketball, volleyball, to name a few. There's 17 NCAA sports that are housed within CU Boulder. Um, we are, even though we are a big school, we still have great ways for that community to feel small with our 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Um, but you really can avoid those large classes if you truly don't want to be in them. In fact, my very first year, we had a general biology course that only had nine students. So overall, we have over 500 different student clubs and organizations, anything you can choose from. Uh, or if you don't see something that really speaks to you, you're more than welcome to be able to start that with our Center for Student Involvement. Um, really, we recognize at the end of the day that community shines through and starts off in your very first year, and then you're able to build on that. Now, because community is so important at the end of the day, it actually has a lot to do with your academic success. Um, when you think about it, when you enjoy being a part of the community, you're finding friends, you're building friendships, you, you want to keep going to that school. Um, so it leads to a less likely chance of dropping out. Now, at the end of the day, like I mentioned, it comes from that very first year. And so we are gonna require students to live on campus. Now with COVID-19, I recognize, might not be the best situation and is certainly not ideal. Um, we do have a petition to avoid you living on campus. We, we, we just fill it out and we will accept it and respect your wishes. However, we will assume that you will live on campus. So please just make sure this is something you'll want to talk to me about next year, but we again will assume that. So just keep that in mind if you don't want to live on campus. But for those that do want to live on campus, we have a couple different options. We have the residential academic program which does include an academic component within your very first uh, first year and within your residence hall I should say specifically meaning that if you live in the Baker wrap that means that you live in the Baker building and only students who are living in that same building with you can can take that class with you just a great way to meet people to be able to uh, keep your class size down so it is capped at 20 students and again only students who live in that building can take one of those classes with you uh, the other option is the living and learning community otherwise abbreviated as llc and it doesn't have an academic component but similar to the residential academic component um, whereas you have an interest connecting people so instead of the uh, academic class you have maybe the interest of everybody loves to be active and you live in the active LLC so it just makes it easier to meet people to build connections uh, off of an interest that everybody finds important in some way shape or form and then with the University of Colorado Denver we have over hundred and twenty student clubs and organizations on our campus. You can also create your own student club if it's not in existence. Uh, we have 15 club sports, which include basketball, cheer and dance, lacrosse, soccer, track, swimming, tennis, volleyball, and a few others. Uh, we also have a campus in Beijing, China, and we offer international study abroad, research and clinical opportunities. So if you're looking at going to another country, um, you can definitely do that as well. We also have student support services for each ethnicity on campus. 
We're near all of the sporting teams in downtown Denver. So we do partner with them and host the CU Denver Night at the Nuggets, CU Denver Night at the Rockies. Um, students usually pay a minimal fee to get in. And then we usually feed you right before the game, which is a nice benefit. We host block parties, fall fest, spring flings, where we usually have food trucks, live entertainment, zip lining, and many other activities for students to engage in. And then as far as our housing, we do not have a housing requirement. So students are not required to live on campus, but it is optional. If you would like more of that traditional college experience, CU Denver owns two housing sites on campus, which are Lynx Crossing, and we will open a brand new freshman housing site called City Heights in fall of 2021. And both of our units offer single, double, triple occupancy dining halls, meal plans, they, they're fully furnished, all of your uh, utilities, cable, internet services are included in your pricing. They're more apartment style versus your traditional dorm. And we offer free laundry services as well. There are some residential academic programs and learning communities for like the BABSMD and DDS programs. And then also our honors and leaders program, honors and leadership program at CU Denver as well. And I will pass it on to Chia. And then at UCCS, so we do have over 200 clubs and organizations on campus. And so for us, we have our clubs that will range from Greek life, if you wanted to be in a sorority or fraternity, you're able to do that, academic, honor societies, cultural, religious, and politically affiliated clubs. So you have a lot of options. It only takes four people to start a club. So you are able to come up with something that you don't see and you do get funding from student government to put on activities. So if you really wanted to start a shoe tying club, you could do that and student government will pay for your shoelaces, for example. So that is an option and every single year we have our club fairs so that students can sign up for those different club and activities as well. And then with sports, we are an NCAA Division II school. And so we participate in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference and we have our men and women's basketball and soccer women's volleyball, cross country track and field, as well as indoor track and field, men and women's golf, softball, women's lacrosse, different sports like that as well. And so you can go to the games and cheer on the team or participate in those different sports. We also have club sports. So if you wanted to compete against different schools out of state, you could join a club sport and be able to do it that way or join an intramural sport where you just compete against students at UCCS. So if your team wins, you often get fry or prizes like free Chipotle or Noodles and Company or Chicago. So they'll give you some type of reward for your team winning. And we have things like Canoe Battleship, where it's two people per canoe. And you go inside of our pool and try and sink everybody with buckets of water. So whoever's canoe is left floating wins. And that's the whole point of Canoe Battleship. So you'll have activities and events like that as well that you can participate in. Then when it comes to our annual events, typically every year we would have a homecoming dance. So you're still able to get dressed up and go to homecoming. They pair it with casino night. So you get fake money to play at the casino tables if you wanted to, or you could just stay in the dance and be in that dance area as well. And you have those options. We have a comedian that comes in. He's called the dating doctor. He talks about how to find a boyfriend and girlfriend, keep them, dump them, get over them. He's free. So you're able to go to him every single year if you wanted to and see that or hypnotists and mentalists come in and do free shows for students. So you have that aspect of student life. And this year we still did it where we were able to host some students on campus and then the rest could join virtually if they'd like as well. Then when it comes to housing, students are required to live on campus unless you live in El Paso County, Colorado, which is a county surrounding Colorado Springs. Now we do have a housing exemption form. So if you did not feel comfortable with living on campus, then that is where you'd be able to fill out that form and have that conversation with housing. 
Now, when it comes to our on-campus housing, we have 13 different options for students. The most popular one is for you to actually have your own bedroom. So the picture that you're seeing is actually one student's bedroom and she just has people visiting her. But you could have your own space where you have your own privacy and you can have your own bedroom and your own bathroom or you could have your own bedroom in a suite. So you would share a bathroom with three other people. And at the most, you would actually share a bathroom right now with three other people. In normal times, we have suites that can hold up to six people at the most. And so you have that flexibility. You could share a bedroom with one other person because that will help keep costs down as well. And then all of our meal plans are unlimited. So students have the exact same meal plan when you live on campus as a freshman. And you could go into both of our dining halls every 15 minutes if you'd like because your meals are free. And they're included as part of your meal plan. So is your laundry facilities. They text you and tell you when your laundry is done. Cable, internet, utilities. That's all a part of housing. And you could continue to live on campus if you wanted to because we do have our apartments for our upperclassmen as well. So that's just a little bit about our community. Wonderful. So I know we, we're just running out of time. We have about 15 minutes left, I believe. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of speed through this so we can get through people's questions. Um, but at the end of the day, we all have various student support services. We have study abroad. We have plenty of student organizations and clubs that everybody can join to really find their home and for us, um, for students to get involved. At the end of the day, we, we all recognize the importance of, of involvement. Now, how do you get to all of our fabulous schools? How are you able to make that dream a potential reality? And that's just through the application process. So specifically, I want to point out, it is not, you can't just apply to one and you get into all three. You can't apply to Boulder and expect that your high school transcripts would then be sent to the other institutions. It just doesn't work like that. We are recognize each other as very separate schools um, and, and that we just, we just happen to share the same name, CU, and our school colors. So for CU Boulder specifically, we are on the common application for incoming first year students. And then for transfer students, we have our very very own separate CU Boulder application. So a first year student is someone who is graduated from high school, they're planning to go to apply to CU Boulder. Transfer student is someone who has uh, finished at either a, a community college or is transferring from a incoming, another four year institution. Um, so please recognize the differences there. Now with the application, um, we do not have a minimum GPA. We do not have a minimum test score. So please recognize, while if I could, I wouldn't show this slide just because it doesn't necessarily guarantee anything. It's just what we call our middle 50%. So 50% of our students have been admitted in some way, shape or form in this range. That is a weighted GPA and that is also a super score possibility um, with the SAT or ACT. Again, not a minimum, this is not a guarantee, this is not a threshold, this is just to show you from 2019 admitted first year students what their range looked like, and there were still students outside of these ranges that were successfully admitted. Now, we also are going to ask for a variety of other things, certainly your application and then your two short essays uh, for incoming first year students and then, uh, or one personal statement for transfer students. Uh, the, your essays are your time to shine or your chance to advocate for yourself, to let us know things that maybe there's not she shown anywhere else in the application. Um, please take these essays seriously. We do read them and especially with free Colorado app day coming up on the 13th we are going to need that need one of the two essays completed in order for you to turn it in for free so recognize um, we are going to read them and they're quite important in fact some students are directly admitted because their essays are that phenomenal now we're also going to ask uh, for an application fee which none of you should be paying if you are a Colorado resident because we have free Colorado app day like I mentioned on October 13th all of us are participating on that day. Um, and then CU Boulder has other specific events in which you attend. You will be able to, um, to receive an app fee waiver. 
We're also going to ask for your uh, high school transcripts. Just this year, we'll take official or unofficial documents. Same thing for the college transcripts, as well as um, not, I did not fix it here, but we are test optional. So it should say optional at the bottom, but um, we are a test optional school. Actually, all of us are test optional. Um, that means that if you do not want to take the SAT or ACT, I don't blame you. None of us blame you. I wouldn't take it either. So <laughs> definitely, uh, you can submit your application to CU Boulder without those scores. Even if you do take the SAT and you just don't like your score, that's also okay. It's completely up to you to decide whether or not you still want to send it to us. We also will ask for one academic letter of recommendation as well as your resume or activities list. And all of this certainly should be um, oops, turned in by November 15th for early action or January 15th for regular decision. The, uh, for early action, you're just applying early, you wanna know early, we don't blame you, we'll give you your admissions decision early and then regular decision, you'll know earlier. So again, everything you see here must be turned in by those deadlines in order to have a completed application. So go ahead and pass it on to Denisha to talk about the application for CU Denver. And our processes are pretty similar as far as students going online to apply. You can go to our UC Denver website to apply, or you can also go to the Common App and apply as well. Basically, um, and then if you're applying as a transfer student, and Camilla already kind of explained those differences, um, so I won't go into further depth with that, but if you are applying as, tr as a transfer student, we do have our own transfer site that you can apply to as well. So basically just um, complete the application. And then Camilla, if you wanna go to the next slide. And then these are just our average admission ranges based upon the 50 percentile chart. Um, so average GPAs, but that doesn't specify that if you don't meet that GPA or that test score that you will not be admitted to CU Denver. Um, those are just the average ranges of students that were admitted in 2019. Um, and then as she stated, we are test optional, so we are not requiring students to submit the ACT or SAT test for the class of 2021. And then we also don't require letters of recommendation or an essay. So those are optional for students to provide. And we do suggest if you have a low GPA or low test scores, or if you have unforeseen circumstances, um, that you should definitely provide letters of recommendation and an essay just to um, help with your chances of being admitted to the school. And then um, I guess I moved on but we do charge a $50 application fee and we do have fee waivers available. Definitely if you apply October 13th on free application day, we can waive your fee. And then at some of the additional events, if we're visiting your high school or attending one of the application days at your school, definitely take advantage of that because that's an opportunity for you to get your $50 application fee waived. And I will pass it on to Chia, thank you. For UCCS, we do have our application on our website. If you just went to uccs.edu slash apply, and you'll see the difference between first year and transfer applications. We also have a peak performance application, and that would be emailed out to specific students that we are reaching out to. So you could check your email and see if you have completed that application. It does make the application faster to complete. However, you don't have to do all three of these, just one. Um, and then we have the Common App that we are a part of as well that you can do too. Then for our admitted students, you can see our GPA range. And as they've already emphasized, students can be admitted if they have below this 3.1 GPA. You could have above the 3.9 weighted GPA. And those are just our average ranges for ACT, SAT, and our transfer students, where you would need at least a 2.4 cumulative GPA However, for transfer students, the GPAs will range depending on your major. So engineering, nursing, they'll have a higher GPA requirement. And for our application checklist, we do have our online application, a $50 application fee or application fee waiver, and we will need your official high school transcript. 
the college transcripts are required for transfer students. However, if you are a high school student and you are taking college classes, then you would still complete our first year student application. and We will not need your college transcripts unless you're choosing to attend UCCS and we will get those in the summer. So don't worry about turning in your college transcripts now if you're still in high school. And then ACT and SAT scores are optional for the entering class of 2021 and letters, recommendations, and essays are also optional. They will be required if you have certain dips in your GPA or grades, but we will let you know if we need them. So for the majority of students, it's optional and you can turn in your application without submitting an essay or letter as a, letters of recommendation. Awesome, so great news. All three of us, like you've seen, use the common application. So you can just use that one application to apply to all three schools. Certainly take advantage of it if you can. Uh, it just makes it easier so you don't have to fill out your name three different times in order to submit an application um, for all three. Now, definitely encourage you all to submit on October 13th so you can avoid our, our fees of $50 and uh, then that way you're done. So go ahead and submit it on the 13th. If you have any questions about that, please let us know in the chat. Now, last piece is the financial aid portion. Um, for financial aid for CU Boulder specifically, we do accept FAFSA, of course. If you can't fill out the FAFSA application, there is the CAF. Um, I can never say it, but it's the Colorado application for financial aid, essentially, for, for the, to be able to still get funding. Um, and it, please let us know if you have any questions about which one you should fill out. But with the FAFSA that has opened October 1st, um, and we also are going to have a CU Boulder scholarship application that opens November 1st. The only caveat is that you do have to be an applicant. So please make sure you want to access it come November 1st. You do need to submit your application on the common application. Um, that is the only way to submit for CE Boulder. And then get it in by February 15th to really maximize how much you can qualify for um, to avoid the narrative of, oh, I should have applied, I just missed the deadline. Uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Now, of course, uh, we also want to recognize our CU promise. And what this states is that CU Boulder promises to cover the, your tuition so long as you are Pell eligible. Meaning if you filled out the FAFSA and you've received any part of what's called the Pell Grant, you've either received a full Pell Grant or even a dollar or a penny of the Pell Grant, we will automatically cover your tuition for CU Boulder. So please recognize that if you, again, if you have any questions, we can chat about that at the end, but when you fill out the Pell Grant, please make sure that that means that your tuition is covered for CU Boulder. Um, so I do want to preface that the financial aid piece and the application piece for all three of our schools should be happening at the same time. So go ahead and pass it to, to Denisha. Take it over. And CU Denver's financial aid, we also accept the FAFSA and the CAFSA as Camilla stated. Um, so the FAFSA opened on October 1st, and that's to let you know if you qualify for grants, loans, scholarships, or work study. Um, CU Denver, our scholarships also opened October 1st. So if you're graduating in 2021, definitely go online and start applying for those scholarships if you've already applied to CU Denver. And then we do have merit-based scholarships awarded automatically based upon the application that you provide. Um, so those are automatically awarded. You don't have to apply for those. And then we do have additional scholarships based upon your major, based upon miscellaneous criteria. For example, if you're a first-generation student, we do offer first-generation scholarships. We have honors and leaders. Uh, scholarships as well. So just a lot of other scholarships that you can apply for. And the deadline for those scholarships, you have to apply by March 1st. So definitely make sure you get that scholarship submitted by March 1st of 2021 if you're graduating in 2021. And then apply for financial aid early. We definitely encourage you to do that. Um, the earlier you apply, the better because they award as a first come first serve basis. And then our financial aid priority deadline is actually April 1st. Um, so you can still apply after that deadline, but that's our priority deadline. So just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. And I'll pass it on to Chia. 
So for UCCS, very similar. We both we accept both the FAFSA and the CASPA. Um, and October 1st is when FAFSA opened up. December 1st is when our scholarship application and housing application will open. You have to be accepted to UCCS before you can complete our scholarship and housing applications. And we also have an automatic scholarship that we will see if you have earned that when you apply. Then February 1st is our early scholarship deadline, and March 1st is when the final scholarship deadline is for the rest of our scholarships. That's also the FAFSA and our housing application priority deadline. Awesome. So you certainly saw we all have merit-based aid. We have scholarships, grants, and work study to be able to provide for our students. And of course, um, this should have changed to the CAFSPA, but it's such a complicated acronym. I can never say it. But certainly we have options for you if you cannot fill out the FAFSA. So please, if you can't fill out the FAFSA, don't fret. Please don't do nothing. Please reach out to one of us so we can be able to make sure you get the money that you deserve. Now, here is our contact information. Um, we have certainly some time for questions, and I definitely encourage you all to take a photo of this to be able to uh, reach out to any one of us. I'm sure we can also put that in the chat later on. Um, but we all do host one-on-one -on -one virtual appointments and have school-specific information sessions uh, virtual options as well as webinars. So definitely take advantage of if you want to learn more information about specific opportunities or how to get involved or learn more about our academic programs within, uh, we all have the capabilities to be able to provide that virtually. So with that, I'll go ahead and transition to what questions do we have? I know we saw some, some chat. I saw some chat pop up, so yes. <laughs> so do we participate in ROTC? Awesome. Well, we do. Um, so CU Boulder has all branches except for the Coast Guard, just because there is no coast to guard, right? We're in Colorado. But um, with that, we do have the capability all on campus, I should say. So we do have ROTC on campus for all four branches uh, or for those, those four branches. And CU Denver also offers ROTC as well for those branches. UCCS offers Army ROTC, Air Force ROTC, you would have to go one day a week to CU Boulder for your PT. Awesome, great question. So that's always a, a difficult question to answer. It says, does UCCS have pretty good engineering programs? I think we do or else we wouldn't offer them. Um, so yes, they are a, a they are a bet accredited programs. They are also nationally ranked for engineering. So you have a lot of internships that you're going to be doing as part of that. We're about 87% of our students are actually hired off of their internships. And they don't even enter into the job market for engineering specifically. You have a lot of labs and hands on experience that you'll be doing as part of the engineering program. And we do have specific people within the engineering department that help you find those internships and they host their own career fairs. You have free tutoring that you can go to across the board. We have free tutoring for your math, English, science, writing, communication classes and foreign language for all of our students and then engineering has specific free tutoring as well. Same thing with the nursing program, also a nationally ranked program for students to be able to participate in. You have that one year prerequisites before you go in and actually apply to the nursing program itself. Then, are you able to take a trip at CU Boulder? What languages do you provide to learn? Yes, yeah, so for CU Boulder, unfortunately, we are not encouraging any in-person tours or things of that nature. Um, we have a very great presence online to be able to educate the public about the offerings we are able to, uh, to be able to have at CU Boulder. We also have a virtual tour, so you can tour the campus from the comfort of your own home. As far as the languages go, um, is the languages of like academic languages, Chia, is that what the question was? Or is it like the languages of the, of the presentations we offer? I think the languages that you, that you offer as a degree. 
That's a trigger. Okay, perfect. So there's about uh, over 50 different languages we certainly teach. Now it can range from sign language to Russian to Arabic, German, Spanish language, Spanish, uh, Portuguese. The list certainly goes on, but we might offer it as a class and offer it as a, a possibility to learn. However, it certainly depends on the language if you wanted to major, minor, or pursue a certificate. It just depends on what you wanted to pursue and if we offer that. Then some other questions that were coming in. Which of the three schools has the best business program? We certainly don't like to compete. Um, we want our students to not only think of the academic offerings, but to also think of the culture within uh, all three schools. As you've noticed, we, we have very different vibes. Uh, for lack mm -hmm. of better words, words um, within the school. So uh, for, for we have what's called our lead school of business, and that's going to feature accounting, finance, marketing, real estate, and management. So of course, if you have any interest in one of those, that would see you Boulder would be a great uh, choice. But of course, I don't know about any of the other business programs at the other schools. I would say we have a, we all pretty have, pretty much have strong business programs. Um, but as Camilla stated, it depends upon what you're looking at studying um, because we also have just the basics in accounting, finance, and all of those. But then we also have entrepreneurship and then we have sports management um, for the Denver campus as well. Same thing, we're all accredited in business. So your degree is going to come from an accredited school and so we do have internships specifically for our students within business similar to engineering college of business does have their own um, center the career center to help students find those different internships as well as be able to get jobs afterwards with career fairs so you're going to have those similar experiences in those business classes just knowing that it's a accredited program that we all have to meet those same standards no matter which of the three schools you go to Then are there co-op programs at these schools? So it certainly depends on what type of co-op you're looking for. I know co-ops can be like for three years um, and it depends on if you wanted to do in like engineering or business. Uh, it, they're really student focused, but instead of co-ops, what we, what we all are gonna offer are, are pretty much internships, wow. which are a great way of getting involved and getting your name out there and getting that networking experience. Um, again, I would say even internships can sometimes be better than co-ops. Um, it just depends on, again, what you're studying and what field you wanna go into. And ours is just like that, the same with the internship opportunities. Agreed for UCCS as well. Then is CU Denver paired with CU Anschutz and how does that work? We are paired with CU Anschutz for our BABSMD program and the BABSDDS program. Um, so students basically apply to CU Denver and then you have a supplemental application that you have to complete for the Anschutz campus. They usually have you attend a set information session and then if you're selected in that program, it's very competitive. They only select 10 students for the dental program and the medical program. Um, so for that, it's very competitive, but we do encourage students to apply um, because as I stated earlier, you get more hands-on training. They prepare you for the entrance exam for medical and dental school. And then you have a guaranteed interview with the dental school or the medical school. And then we do have the other pre-health programs and we do have pre-health advisors on the Denver campus that actually work with the students, but you would complete your pre-requisite coursework at the downtown Denver campus once you complete that. So say if you were looking at going into nursing, you would do two to three years of your pre-reqs and then apply to the Anschutz Medical Campus once you're accepted then you would finish up your degree in nursing out at the Anschutz Medical Campus. So depending on which program you're going into, but we do have nursing, pharmacy, uh, physical, what is it called? Oh gosh, I forgot. So nursing, pharmacy, physical therapy, we have uh, public health, and then there's a lot of other programs. Like you can go into like the neurosciences and some other areas. 
Awesome. And it looks like we have some questions about our study abroad programs in exchange. So in general, when do we think students will be able to study abroad again? And does you Boulder have an exchange program? Ooh, when, when, ew. I, uh, that's a hard question to ask, right? I am, unfortunately, we don't know. We are still having some study abroad programs. I would say every university is offering maybe a limited option. It just depends on, on the country because not only can you study abroad internationally, but you can certainly study abroad domestically too. So please keep that in mind. Um, now, as, for, as far as exchange programs, we do offer exchange programs. It just depends on what country you would like to go to. It also depends on what you plan on doing in that country. You not only can pursue taking classes at that university, but you can also maybe have an internship abroad or you can um, do research abroad. For for example, we have students go to the Galapagos Islands to study the various ecosystems there. Um, so it's up to you. It really just depends. It's more so your decision on where you would like to go. And then we can have conversations about that moving forward. I think all of us have study abroad programs in general um, where you'd be able to study abroad that way. Now, when they'll open up, it really depends on what's going on in the world right now but you do have those options too. And then too, I just wanted to add that CU Denver, we actually are still doing some of our study abroad programs virtually right now until COVID becomes better. So um, just wanted to let you know that there are still some study abroad options available. Perfect. What is the percentage of students living on each campus? I would say for us, it's probably like 8% living on campus. Oh, well, I, other than the incoming first years. Yeah, I should clarify. <laughs> yes. I am totally blanking on that stat right now for you, CCS. Um, but I know for our freshman students, since they do have to live on campus their first year, the majority do, unless they live within Colorado Springs. Past first year, the majority of students choose to live off campus. So they'll still live pretty close, but they will not live on campus for their sophomore through senior years. And then I think our numbers are pretty low because we're kind of like a commuter campus. So we don't have a lot of students that live on campus, but we do have housing available. And I know um, for the last few years, our housing has been full. So we've probably had a good amount of students on campus but they go directly through our housing, so we don't have those numbers. And Denise, I believe you touched on this, but does CU Denver have a good medical health sciences program or anything you wanted additionally to add on about that? Um, we do have really good health programs. As I stated earlier, we do all of the, the nursing, the medicine, the pharmacy, physical therapy, physician assistant, dentistry, um, we have public health. We also do bioengineering where students can do um, some of their coursework out at the Anschutz campus as well. Um, so we're very strong. We were ranked um, for our medical programs. I think we're fourth in the nation and number one in the state of Colorado. And then some of like nursing, I think they're 14th in the nation. And is there one school that has a better public health program or are they all pretty similar? Ooh, so for CU Boulder, we don't have a, uh, we have a public health certificate and we have a pre-public health track. Um, it also, I should say, I mean, this is a general public health statement. It certainly depends on what type of public health you want to go into. There could be master's program. I know Denise at CU Denver, you all have a master's of public health program, um, but public health is a pretty big term. So if you're looking to go into education policy, again, part of public health, we're going to offer that as a master's program. Um, it just depends on what about public health you want to do when it comes to CU Boulder. And CU Denver, we do have the Bachelor of Arts and the Bachelor of Science in public health. And then you can also continue on with the master's uh, program as well. So um, just like Camilla said, it just depends on your pathway and what you're wanting to do within the field of public health. And then just quickly in general, can you get committed to a sport? 
Um, for CU Boulder, you would have to reach out to the coaches if you're looking to play a particular sport. Admissions does not affiliate with athletics when it comes to um, uh, athletes. Same thing. So the coaches at UCCS would be the ones to connect with the students to actually walk them through that process. It does not go through admissions. And then for CU Denver, we have club sports. So you would just basically get in contact with our student life um, to get involved in those programs. And let's see, we only have time for one more question. I see a lot of questions still in here. So if you have specific questions for each of us, we will have the live chat times. So you can go to the virtual booths and go to the live chat. I believe the next time starts at 1 p.m. So in a couple minutes. So you're able to ask your questions there. And also you can email us, you can go ahead and attend an information session specifically on our school, go to our website. So I'm sorry, we won't have time to answer all of your amazing questions. These are great, um, but just know you do have those other options. So the one thing I just wanna leave or the last question is, is it easy to change your major? Um, it depends. So if you are changing your major within an academic college, it's super easy. You just fill out some paperwork, you're good to go. If you want to switch between, let's say, arts and sciences to engineering or music to, CM to, to business or to CMCI, it depends on, uh, on what we call an intra-university transfer process. Um, for right now, just know it is easy to change your major, especially as you're in the application process, because we can reevaluate your application for your new major. And for CU Denver, it's pretty easy to change your major. If you haven't started and you want to change your major before you start, you would just change that through your portal account. But then if you wait until after you've taken classes, then you would go through your academic advisor, fill out the paperwork, and then they would get your major changed for you. In a grade, same thing at UCCS, fairly easy to switch your major. Um, if you're switching from College of Business, from business degree to engineering, for example, then that's where you would get a new academic advisor because you're switching colleges, but they can still walk you through that entire process. And if you are an undecided student, you actually don't have to declare a major right away. So you still have time to figure that out and the Career Center will work with you to help you pick a major. So thank you everyone for joining us today. We wanna to give you a couple minutes just in case you're jumping on to another session, but thank you. We appreciate your participation. Wonderful questions. As I said, there's still some left in there so we couldn't get to all of them, but definitely live chat the different schools individually if you do have questions still. Wonderful. Well, we hope you all have a great day um, and, and we're, we'll be here all week. So definitely don't hesitate by any means if, if something later on too comes up that you'll have that option to reach out to us. Yes, and you also have our contact information, so definitely utilize that information as well, and thank you all for your time. Thank you for coming. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.